We're going to focus on this video on how to write your scientific investigation. Remember that this is 20% of your grade and depending on your teacher, it might be done on the first year or in the second year. So what I'm going to do is go through every section of this lab report. Make sure that you know exactly where to focus your energy at and what are the things that you shouldn't be doing in this section. So first, let's get the scope here. What are the points and which locations are these points allocated to? So you see that there's four sections, right? There was a research design, a data analysis, conclusion, and evaluation. Each one of these guys have six points. What I'm going to be doing is going through each one of them and telling you what are the important things that you must say for each one of them. Reminding you, when it comes to the communications here, that first, there has to be a template here with all the subtitles in there. That's organization, that's communication skills. You have to make sure. Do not use first person language. It's not, I did this, I did that. It has to be in third person maximum of 12 pages. However, there's a little bit of a change now, which is 3,000 words, but you shouldn't be still not pushing more than 12 pages, okay? Scientific words have to be used. That means every time you're using an organism, be a plant or an animal, it has to be in scientific language and it has to be in italics. And that has to go throughout the entire paper. If we have the examiners find one time in which you did not put it, we can take points for the communication. That's how picky we can be. And of course, the biography, it's your choice, depending what the teacher and their school is deciding, if it's MLA or APA, follow through exactly through all of them. And again, no plagiarism. If you get plagiarized, you might as well not get a diploma at all. So everything must be paraphrased. Everything must be put into quotes if you want to use exactly the same sentence. And of course, everything has to be cited. Nothing comes from you, it came from somebody else. So with that, we're gonna start with the research design section. And we're gonna go in small little videos of dissections and focus on different parts of it. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is the research question, the title. This is basically telling me what your job, what your lab report is about. You're going to have an independent variable and you're going to have a dependent variable. These two have to be very clear when it comes to your research question. If they're not there or they're very too vague or too big or too generalized, then you lose points right there. So here is examples of questions that you can ask. For instance, one of them is, to what extent does an IV, which means independent variable, affect the DV? That is a very common research question, which it can be used. Another one is how does the IV impact or influence the DV? That's why I told you in the beginning, it's very important that you know clearly what is your independent variable and what is your dependent variable, because then you just can plug them into these two questions. Here is an example. To what extent does the temperature affect the amount of sweat released from the body of a homo sapien? Look at this. Right here, you have the temperature as the independent and the amount of sweat, it is a dependent. So the temperature is affecting how much you sweat. And then here's another thing, if you notice, we're not using the word human, we're using the word homo sapien. And if you notice, it's in the italic, knowing that the genus is in capitalized and the species is in lowercase. This stuff is very important. Now, some questions, they will be like, do I have to be more detailed? Do I have to say the different five variations of temperature? No, it's not necessarily, but you're also not going to get points off. So if you want to say temperature and put it in brackets, 5, 10, 15, 20, and so forth, which has to be five of them, then yes, you can. But if you're going to put those numbers, you also have to make sure you're putting the unit and the uncertainty to that unit. The same thing with the amount of sweat. Amount of sweat will be probably volume that you have to put the unit plus the uncertainty of the equipment that you're going to use in order to do this. Now, some might ask, do you really need to put the equipment in your research question? No, you do not have to put your equipment name in the research question. We are only looking for the independent and the dependent and whatever it is the organism if you are using in scientific language. That's how you get the research question point. So... Here is examples that are wrong that you need to sh just to show you what we actually look at. He says to determine the effect of different stored onions and that they put cut onions, peeled onions, onions with scalenes, 
on the decaying rate of carrots, potatoes, and lettuce. Where is the problem with this one? First, onions. It's not the scientific language. You have to get the right scientific name for it. Here, it says cut onions, peel onions, and onions with scallion. That's just three variations right there. You need to have five. So you're not going to get the points. And then on the decaying rate of carrots, potatoes, and lettuce. How are you going to do the decaying rate? There, there has to be a description of what is that. By length, by width, what exactly is that? Get a little bit of detail of how you're going to measure the decaying rate. Okay, this is what it goes, not counting carrots, potatoes, and lettuce, they have to be in scientific names. The second one, measuring the rate of nitrate and pH of the fish tank over two weeks, just stopping there. Nitrates and pH, that's two independent variables. You already lost it right there, you're not getting the points. And most likely that's going to affect the entire lab points and every single part of it. Remember, it's one independent for one dependent. And he says, in order to investigate the importance of biological filtrations and man-made filters. Again, this is then, when I read this, it looks like the opposite. It basically says, biological filtration and man-made filters, these are the independents right now. Which one is it? Which one are you doing? This then it looks like, even if it's biological filtration and man-made filters, that is still considered as two independents variables only. or So this is very reverse and it's very unclear, so most likely you will lose points because it's not showing. So what is the right way of writing a research question, which usually is the title of your scientific investigation? Here, for example, to what extent does the pH affect the rate of photosynthesis of a molecular mask? So you can see there is an independent, there's a dependent, and the organism in scientific language. The next one, to determine the effect of different salinity solutions on the transpiration rate of Psyllus vulgaris. Again, you have the independent, the dependent, and the organism in scientific language. To what extent does different pH affect the lipase activity rate on a soy milk fat breakdown? So all of these are considered as good, but again, you could increase by putting in bracket the pH, for instance, so how does the pH affect? In brackets, the pH, you put 2, 4, 6, you can put that. Or you can talk about saline solutions, you can put the concentrations, 5, 10, 20, but make sure you're putting the units and the uncertainties if you want to place it here. It's extremely important. If you do this, then it will be good. So on the next video, what I'm going to do is talk now about the background. So for now, these are just examples of showing you how to do the research question. And remember, with NAIB, you can get that seven. So I'll see you on the next video for the next explanation.